in the southern interior of British Columbia, about 440 kilometers from Vancouver, you'll find the scenic and eclectic city of Vernon. Vernon is one of the largest centers in the Okanagan region, situated between three lakes, rolling grasslands, and stunning mountain views. The community offers both an active cultural scene and plenty of opportunity for outdoor sport and adventure. Vernon is especially known for its skiing, and there's no shortage of opportunity for alpine enthusiasts in the area. But for Josh Duick, sit skiing, an adaptive sport for persons with disability, is also a way to express himself. I often contemplate the notion if we need contrast to enjoy beauty. Do we need polarity in life to really appreciate things? Do we need the hard times to really value the beautiful times? For me in my life, absolutely. You know, the value of skiing for me when I first started was, and in, in a big way still is, it's an opportunity for me to express myself freely without using words, you know, how I, I feel is expressed through how I choose my line coming down the mountain. I didn't have a chance to experience skiing until I was a teenager, but right away, as soon as I did, it, it caught fire and it's all I wanted to do and it's all I've really focused on in the last 20 years. The evolution of the sit ski has been something that's been a part of my entire ski career, which is pushing 12 years right now in the sit ski. And when I entered the sport, I had just this massive imagination of what was possible on the snow, and then realized right away technology was a limiting factor. And luckily with the ski team, I was interjected into an R&D project that lasted about five years of my racing career and we had tons of resources to build what you see today. And the technology is better than the rider. The machine, we're looking at probably the third incarnation in the last handful of years. And if I have anything to do with it, I'd love to see a couple more, which will basically make the sport easier for people to enter, more enjoyable and more safer. We've got to get some paper and then we can start writing that down. Yeah. yeah. Find your name. What's this? Cool card, that's your name, Love Nova. Busiest family right now, and with two little kids at home, my wife and I are just trying to get our heads wrapped around a three-year-old and a newborn, so we're fully engaged with that. In terms of professional, writing a book and putting energy into a foundation to, again, bring sport to the masses, to make something that's been so impactful to me accessible to other people and shine a light on what's available in the Okanagan Valley right now. And that's how I got into sport, was somebody who is just stoked to share his passion. And my life was forever changed because of that man. And I'd like to be there and be available for other people when they're going through transition and share the magic and share the beauty of the outdoors and sport. I often come into my man cave and it, I, I like to think of it as my imagination station and where I come out here and I look at the different pieces of equipment that I'm fortunate enough to have and the places that it's taken me and more importantly the places that I imagine and dream about going to and exploring. And we live, we live in the golden age of disability. Um, this type of equipment may not have existed that long ago and as a young person with a mobility impairment, uh, I have an opportunity to basically explore undiscovered territory. And I say that lightly because clearly a lot of the areas that I go have been explored and in fact there might even be a pathway to them. But for a person with a disability it is new ground and that's fun. There's something about nature. There's something about immersing yourself in the outdoors. I love being home and reconnecting with everybody that has elevated me, inspired me, and I think they might even say the same, right? They might be like, well, hey, he's done great and he's been an inspiration, and, and that is 
And I, I say that lightly, but that's such a beautiful synergy to have with the community where you both feel such a positive effect from one another. And I love being home. Vernon might not be as large as a city like Vancouver, but it has surprising opportunities to combine technology, business, and, if you ask, on ooch, philanthropy too. Give that a kiss. Mm -hmm. I live in a beautiful small town in Vernon, BC with my family. My beautiful wife, May, and my three kids, Aaliyah, eight years old, Ava, four years old, and the youngest daughter, Kara, who is uh, two years old. <laughs> Our family are really blessed to have the life we're living today. We were sponsored to Canada in 1989. Uh, we used to live a, in a refugee camp in Thailand where uh, my parents fled Cambodia because there was a civil war under the Khmer Rouge regime. So we, I was born in the refugee camp and our life there was uh, a huge struggle. You know, there wasn't food, there's no medical. And our life really changed when Vernon took the time to sponsor our family to Canada to give us this second opportunity in life. It was a struggle, um, new culture, um, we were seeing this different, different, and, but as growing up, you know, my parents were always saying, you know, we're in a better country now. We have a life with full opportunity, and, you know, doing all the stuff I'm doing now, it's because, you know, I'm pretty blessed to, to have this life. Just so I've got here, how it looks on an iPad, Yeah. see? I, I thought it would be great to show you this and to get your input about this. I started a, a software development company doing software development and getting a software out there for you know small business owners. So I want to create something to help increase e efficiency for small businesses. Another job is the social lead marketing and action. I do video productions for small business to um, big companies and running a restaurant. <laughs> And uh, we all, a lot of people, a lot of restaurants know that's a lot of work, but I'm totally blessed to have, you know, my parents working in there and some great staff working there to kind of help me uh, um, get through the whole thing. The Walkathon started eight years ago as a way for me to remind me and my family where we came from and a way for us to give back to the community. Our restaurant donates 100% of the sales to charity. Um, we select two charities, one local and one in Cambodia. And, and to, to date, we donated over $75,000 to charity. I always put my family as the first priority, and everything I do, I do it for my family and my community. Um, I, I live a really busy life, but I'm also blessed to have this life. Not many people know that Vernon was the site of an internment camp that imprisoned Ukrainians and other Europeans during World War I. But this little-known part of our past offers important lessons to remember. So I'm of Ukrainian heritage. Both my parents are first generation. And I grew up in Vernon. That was a, a very English community. And I always felt that I was different to most of the kids that I grew up with. Pre-World War I, there was approximately 160,000 Eastern Europeans who immigrated to Canada and were noted then as aliens. And of course, when the war broke out, they called them uh, enemy aliens because they came from a country where Canada was at war. So they created a number of registration offices across Canada and they asked so-called enemy aliens to register with your local authority, relinquish all your weapons, and report on a monthly basis to say that you're on your farm farming. Unfortunately, they incarcerated 8,579 civilians um, in 24 internment camps literally across Canada from Halifax, Nova Scotia to Nanaimo, British Columbia. 
1997, I was asked to research the Vernon internment camp and unveil a plaque. I did not know that this had happened at the time. I was shocked that this had happened in the community that I grew up in, on the property of the high school that I attended. And I did not know at that time that I had a direct connection. So these cards are my grandparents' registration cards, deeming them as enemy aliens. When uh, internees were arrested, their wealth was confiscated and forced into slave labor. The uh, British Columbia government felt that they had the right to use this cheap labor to create their infrastructure and build up their parks uh, for public use. So in particular in Vernon, Ukrainians and other Europeans were sent out to create the highways in, this, in our Okanagan area. 107 died during their incarceration in the internment operations. And what's also interesting is 106 went mentally insane. It has had an impact on generations, either them knowing that a family member was interned or that they didn't know. And it maybe explains a lot of maybe why a family member was why they, what, you know, how they were because of what happened to them. Um, so these uh, photographs I have here are from Fred Cozy, who spent six years of his childhood in the Vernon internment camp and was incarcerated there with his cousins. I have the cutest photo here of uh, children playing and running. And uh, what, one thing Mr. Cozy said to me, when he came to Vernon, he'd never been back until 1997 for the Vernon internment plaque unveiling. And when he came to and stood on the ground where the internment camp was, uh, with tears in his eyes, he looked up at the hillsides and he said, for six years of my life, I looked up through the barbed wire fence at the hillsides in Vernon. And he says, it hasn't changed. But he says, as a child, I'd look through the barbed wire and not understanding why. So the city of Vernon has been a wonderful community in embracing their history, but some people are not comfortable. They don't understand why we have to talk about it. Why are we bringing up 100 years later? Good or bad, it's what happened. It's a part of who we are. And I ho I'm hopeful that our community and our societies are embracing the fact that we're all immigrants other than the First Nations and that we should be respectful of each other's heritages and we all have something very special to share with one another and I think that's what makes us Canadians. Cultural diversity is not only part of Vernon's history, it's what makes the city so vibrant today. Just look at the Bollywood Bang, a fundraising idea from City Councillor Dalvir Nahal. I definitely am going to write a book one day about the parallels of the, like, the South Asian community and then the Caucasian community dealing with my cancer. The South Asian community, not all, but you know, they, it was almost like a pity party. They were so down and out and they just did not know how to handle it. In fairness to them, it was like something new, like as somebody so young in the community to get cancer, nobody really knew how to react to it, right? I even had somebody say to me, oh, I don't know if you'll find a husband now that you've had cancer, but I hope you live a long and happy life. And I was like, hmm, thank you. <laughs> I was actually born in India. I came here with my mom in 1977. I just remember even as a kid that I always loved giving and, and doing charity work. We're Sikhs of Sikh faith and the founder of Sikhism, Guru Nanak Dev Ji, that was one of his main philosophies was giving. And it didn't have to be monetary, it could be time. And so it was just something that I've always done as a kid. Just over five years ago, I was diagnosed with um, 
stage three breast cancer. And so we, talking, talking, we thought, wouldn't it be cool to do like an Indian style reception fundraiser? Because as a director with the hospital, I attend, I had the opportunity to attend a lot of different fundraisers, but there were always the typical black tie fundraiser. I guess it was such a new concept, we weren't even sure if it was gonna work in Vernon. I mean, it's a small little um, white town, <laughs> you know, and so, they were like, let's try this. This seems like a cool concept. Like, who, who doesn't know Bollywood? So one of the amazing things about Bollywood, um, I think, which adds to the excitement is the fact that you get to dress up. So you can just see the, the, the vibrant colors that they come in. Oh, look at that. Look how gorgeous this is. Normally these outfits cost a couple hundred dollars each minimum because of the generosity of the Sikh community friends of ours donate it and collect from their friends we all have outfits that we've paid quite a bit of money for but you can't wear the same outfit to two different family weddings because everyone's already seen you in that outfit <laughs> and so people have been amazingly generous it's a lot of work but it's so much fun and then I was thinking black for me yeah with a burgundy uh, okay. Exactly. okay 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 done been coming for a few years, you get privileges to go back, to get, to, to get to the back. <laughs> so these are the newest uh, styles that just arrived right now. So they actually just brought them for us. Uh, otherwise, they were going to have them out like later this week so that we can look through them. Cream of the crop, the most fashionable. So right now, these vests are really in styles. We purchase the men's outfits. They will order what they want, what size and color. We saw that about 35% of the women that came dressed up the first year and one man. And then the second year it was like 65% of the women dressed up and we had, I think it was 29 men dress up. And then last year I would say 95% of the people that attended this event that were not East Indian dressed up. I find with our fundraiser, you'll see people that are South Asian, you'll see people that are, you know, Chinese or Filipino, or, and you'll see people that are Caucasian, and they all come to this event because they enjoy this event and they want to support a good cause. So I'm, I'm really proud of that. I think of everything else, this is my the most proud I am of bridging those gaps and showing that, that we're all human beings. We just want to come out, dress up, have a good time, right? And that's what Bollywood does. We're, we're just here to dance at the end of the night, right? And we do dance, oh my God. <laughs> With Bollywood alone, we've cl we've raised close to $109,000. So we're ho we're hoping maybe to do at least 50, 60 this thousand this year, 50, 60,000. And then since I've been with the hospital board, uh, I've raised close to $200,000. Yeah. I wonder, like, if I hadn't gotten cancer, had would I, you know, there would have been no concept of Bollywood. I think it did change me and if I can just inspire other people that when something tragic happens in our life, it's not the end of the world. Although at that time it seems like it is. So I owe a lot to my cancer if I can say that, good and bad. My philosophy is the worst has already happened. Let's try to move forward. Vernonites are compassionate when it comes to taking care of their own. It's a challenge embraced by dedicated volunteers at the Upper Room Mission. If it hadn't been for the Upper Room Mission, I don't think I'd be sitting here today. I had my first child when I was 17. Um, I went through a hectic marriage, physical, mentally, and abuse. Um, my children, in order for them to have a good education and a life, I ended up putting them in foster homes. And I was drinking, and when I came to Vernon in 2000, $100 a day in alcohol was no problem for me. I don't remember calling the ambulance. I don't remember in the hospital or nothing. Apparently they told me they had to resuscitate me three times going up to Kelowna. And 
I guess. I took nine bottles of prescribed medication while I was drinking. So that ended it. I haven't touched alcohol in 10 years. And the good Lord set a path and brought me here and love my job. Yeah, I love my job. Each day when I come in, I prepare the breakfast. And then when my volunteers take over, I do lunch. And I do take over that, and I do dinner. Lady number one. Oh, we need oatmeal. <laughs> the Upper Room Mission is open 9 to 5, Monday to Friday. It's a place where they can come and get three meals a day, and anybody's welcome to come through our doors. We do not receive funding from the government, so we rely solely on the community and businesses in our community to support us and donate to us. Um, that means monetary donations or food donations or their gift of time. The mission has roughly 100 to 125 volunteers. So without them, we would not be able to do the food services that we do. This gentleman here, he had a heart attack. Uh, he had a heart attack. Uh, most of them OD'd. If we have teenagers that come in, then we talk a little bit about this wall. Like more or less stay away from the drugs or walk, you know. But it's hard to walk by it every day and see them on the board instead of sitting here. So, yeah. When I look at the clients, you know, I can see myself in their shoes when I was drinking. And I know it's hard being out on the street, even though I haven't been but I was almost there. So. I tried to look into the future, hoping that someday they could be in my shoes. And that's my, my goal in life for these people. Vernon is home to so many amazing people. Who are the people you love in your community? Tell us about them by emailing opticlocal at telus.com. We will see you soon. Under the stars, we talk for hours the tales you spoke so divine. My old friend, where are you going to? Let's raise a glass. Days to come. This time is ours, let's make a memory that lasts.